so we've hit the midway point of the lecture, so we're going to flip from courts to corrections. So corrections is what happens once a young person has been sent. So corrections doesn't just refer to custody centers. It refers to the larger umbrella of how we respond to persons that have been sentenced or even persons that are on bail. Under the YCJ, there are different custody dispositions and different non-custody dispositions. So basically, what can a judge elect to apply to a young person that will place them under the purview of correction? So these can include reprimands, which is basically just a simple warning, a discharge, which is to say the individual is guilty but will not have a criminal record. You can have absolute discharges, which is just to release them with no conditions or a conditional discharge, which is to say that if you abide by such and such conditions over such and such a period of time, the offense that you've been found guilty of will be quashed from your record. Other non-custody dispositions can include compensation or restitution. So compensation is more like financial. Restitution is more giving back in some way whether it's through volunteer hours, an apology, something like that. Other non-custody dispositions that are maybe we're more commonly familiar with include community service, a probation order, and attendance order, which is like you have to attend this treatment program. It's three months. It's a residential treatment program, so you'll be living here. And if you go AWOL from this treatment program, it will be considered a violation of your release or your sentence disposition. And so you'll actually receive the new charges will be an example of one of those failures to comply with court orders, what you can call an administrative offense. Intensive support and supervision program, sometimes just referred to as ISP. An ISP order is kind of like probation on steroids, where the individual is assigned a particular ISP worker who's there not just to be like the probation officer that administers the conditions and reminds you of their appointments, make sure that they're abiding by conditions. The ISP worker is also like a mentor who can help the young person, you know, go to different businesses to hand out resumes or help them open a bank account or get a library card, things that maybe the young person just needs as part of their pathway to rehabilitation. This is definitely going to be a question on the final exam, so you'll need to know the four conditions under the YCJ which allow for the use of custody. These four conditions include a violent offense, if the individual has a history of administrative offenses, if the individual has committed an indictable offense and has a history of prior findings of guilt, so they've committed an offense for which an adult could receive two or more years in custody, and they have incurred prior convictions. Fourth, they have committed an indictable offense and there are particularly aggravating circumstances surrounding this offense. So it was against a vulnerable victim like a child or an elderly person. That could be used as a condition that could allow for the use of custody. And you need to understand this part. These conditions are necessary but not sufficient. So just because a youth has committed a violent offense doesn't mean that they have to receive a custody sentence. It only means that a judge may now consider the possibility of a custody sentence. So there are three types of custody sentences under the YCJ. The first is what's called a deferred custody and supervision order. This is where the young person serves their custody sentence in the community. And I always like smile or shake my head when having to talk about this to students because I get that it doesn't make a lot of sen sense. It's a custody sentence, but they don't actually serve any time in custody. So what the deferred custody and supervision order means is that the young person will receive a custody sentence, but they will serve it in the community and need to follow certain conditions. And if they violate any of those conditions, they're automatically placed in custody for the remainder of their sentence, and they will incur new charges for an administrative offense for failing to abide by the conditions of their deferred custody and supervision order. The second type of custody sentence is that custody and community supervision order. And this is where they right away are placed in custody. So that's where they start their sentence. 
whether we're talking about the custody and community supervision order or deferred custody and supervision order, we know that under the YCJA, a youth only serves two thirds of their custody sentence in custody. So if the young person receives a nine month custody and community sentence order, they will spend two thirds of those nine months, so six months in a custody center and then one third of their custody sentence will be served in the community where they're trying to promote the rehabilitation, allow them to return to school, have time to like look for a job, find stable housing, anything like that. So while they're serving their one third of that remaining sentence, so that remaining three months of their custody sentence, at any time that they violate the conditions of their release, they would be returned right away to custody. And very often, there will be a probation order attached to a DCSO or a custody and community supervision order. For example, a young person might get that nine months in custody followed by one year of probation. So they'll spend six months actually incarcerated, three months in the community serving the remainder of their custody sentence. And then once those three months are up, they will begin their probation sentence. And that probation sentence will also include specific conditions that they need to abide by. If they violate those conditions, they could return to custody. So they're not automatically returned to custody if they violate conditions of their probation order. They are returned to custody automatically if they violate the conditions of their community release while serving their custody sentence. The third type of custody sentence under the YCJ is what's called an ERCS order, Intensive Rehabilitative Custody and Supervision. And this isn't really actually elected by a judge, it's actually elected or recommended by the Provincial Director of Youth Custody. So this ERCS order is reserved for youth who have committed a violent offense and suffer from a mental illness or some form of emotional disturbance. So it's not necessarily the case that they have been formally diagnosed with a mental disorder, but that there is some indication that a mental disorder may be present. It's very expensive and rarely used. 